Hello all you beautiful people, how are you doing today? This is Love Temptress and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome, hi! Today we're going to be talking about another tutorial and this one is on compact machines. And if you have never played with compact machines, oh my god, they are so awesome. Now, this is a Sky Factory 4 tutorial, however, these recipes work on almost every mod pack. Um, I do not see the recipes change very frequently with compact machines. Um, so, you know, if there is one that it's changed, definitely let me know because, you know, I don't see them changed a lot. But uh, we're going to show how to make everything. And then we're even going to demonstrate making the big ones. And we have all the different ones set up so we can go take a look from tiny, small, normal, large, giant, and maximum. And we are even going to make the maximum one woo -woo, that you can for Sky Factory 4. All right, so let's get started. First of all, we're going to need to make this personal shrinking device. And apparently I put mine away, so we're going to use this one. But it's just two ender pearls, a book, a piece of iron, and a glass pane. Now you're going to want to make several of these. Well, at least two, because you need the miniaturization field, and that's what you need to make it. But you also need one on your person, because this device, by clicking on it, let's go into the tiny one, all I did was simply right click on the machine with that in my hand, and that actually puts us inside the machine. Now this is tiny, and honestly, I don't know why anybody would make this, unless you want just like a safety hidey hole area. I don't know. I think this is too tiny. Um, I guess if you're in a pack where you're doing sifting or something to begin with, but to get back out, all you do is right click on it again. That's it. But you gotta have your uh, personal, uh, personal shrinking device to get into these. But, uh, well, let, let's take a look, like, um, so that was tiny, and like, I don't ever recommend tiny. Now you are going to have to light these up, but this one is the small. We'll just take a look real quick and see this one, um, probably should have looked at the name of it. A little bit bigger, right? A little bit more room. And you can even set up machines, so that was small and normal. Large is starting to get better, but again, remember to light it up. That's why I have F7 on, so you can see all the dark areas that where stuff can spawn. And stuff can spawn in there, so... So that was large. Here's giant. Oh, look. We even had a bat spawn in here. It's like, oh my god, dark cave! So, it gets taller, which is weird, right? But you could build stuff up, and so it makes it pretty cool. Now, the maximum, of course, is the one I like to make. Look at this. And you can make multiples of these. As you see, with one personal device, I can go in and out each one of these. So if you wanted to make the maximum, you could make several and have different setups in there. But that's up to you. Okay, so let's see how we're actually going to make these blocks to make it, though. So we're going to need four of these miniaturization filled projectors. Now, you can make more than four, so that way you have it set up to make different sizes, but you don't have to. Um, so all you would need is four. So you need that personal shrinking device. Like I said, make at least two. And then two diamonds, a redstone torch, and an eye of ender. Now, four is what we're going to need minimum to make this. Now, what I've done is I set down a block, and when you go to set these down, it'll give you these arrows, and that's to show which way you want to face it. So, the way this works is, and if you click on your personal shrinking device, it gives you a little bit of information, but not, like, tons. So, it'll say... It actually tells you to look up the recipes in JEI. But if you look up the recipes in JEI, they're kind of confusing. But if you click on the miniaturization crafting, this one's useful because it actually tells you that they have to face straight across from each other. So basically, wherever you put your first one down, and I would recommend at least one block up, okay? And then if you look, 
It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then at eight is where the other one goes across from the other. But here's the nice thing. If I set one down, so say I set one down facing me, so I set it here. Now I can right click on this and it'll tell me I should either place one here or here. And of course it's further out too, but so that is where I would need to place them. So it depends on what size you're trying to make. So this is the smallest area and it only stays for a minute so you kind of have to hurry but it does tell you where to put the other ones you'll know that you have them in the right place when you have these beams going so right straight in the middle and what I usually do is after I've counted across here then I put a block of iron and I specifically do a block of iron because that we're going to use this so I put a block of irons directly in the middle and then that way you know you can go out one two three four and place this with the projection on top and again four place it and the projection on top and again if it if you right click it and it says no valid recipe found well that's because it's trying to make a recipe there but if you right click here It'll say missing opposite field projector is required to determine field size. So it'll tell you if it's not set up properly, which is the nice thing. All right, so let's say you have this set up now. This is the smallest one you really want to do. Um, you can do a little bit smaller, but I mean, you're really not going to want to use it. In order to build an actual machine, this is the configuration you want to do. Because this three by three area in the middle that is the smallest one that we can make, the tiny one. All right, but how do we make the compact machine blocks? Well, you're going to put down a block of iron. You're going to put a piece of redstone on it, and then you're going to step back just a little bit and throw a piece of redstone in. And look at it work. Ta-da! So each time you do that, it will give you 16 of these compact machine walls. So now we have two stacks, so you see if I make another one, you'll see it'll give us 16 more. And that's all you have to do. This doesn't require any kind of power or anything. So this is all we do to make these blocks. So each recipe gives you 16 with just one block of iron and two pieces of redstone. Now the reason why I say it's confusing, because if you look at compact machines, if you look up the mod, Okay, say you're wanting to make the tiny one. It just tells you you need 26 blocks in a... The way... It, a lot of people get confused by this. 26 blocks means that's how many you're going to need to build this configuration. What it really means is you want a 3x3x3. Three by three by three. So, and you want a piece for the tiny, which we'll build one. You want a piece, uh, an ender pearl to throw in the middle. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. And we're going to do different ones because they're set up the different ways. So this is a three. So what it means is three by one, two, three. And then you're going to fill in the bottom completely. But then we're going to go up three. So that's two, three. So we're going to leave it blank in the middle. We're going to give it a full top. And we're going to leave that one space there in the middle. Okay. So that is a three by three. And then what we're gonna do is throw in an ender pearl. And then it will make the tiny machine. Now the tiny one, like I showed you, the tiny one is really tiny. So I honestly don't re recommend making the tiny one. Like it's so tiny, I don't even know what you would use it for. I would honestly not use it. Boop. And then it pops off. And we have our little machine and that's how all of these are made but and if you right click on it without your personal it'll say it's your block and it's unused now if I click on any of these it'll tell me it's my block it'll show what it looks like and everything and it's registered to me with my device because I've already gone into these this one I haven't used so it, it'll even tell us it's unused but here's the thing we want to make these right so they're all different recipes. So the small is the same except for that one tiny space in the middle 
you're going to use a block of iron. And I'm going to demonstrate this. We're going to make a maximum size, so hold on. Now, for this one, it's going to be a gold block, but you have to make sure it's directly in the middle. This one's still easy because it's 3x3. Three three. The tricky ones are when you get to a 5x5, five five, okay? So for a large, you're just going to do a 5x5, five five, nothing in the middle. Giant, you're going to have a diamond in the middle, and we're going to make the maximum, and that has a block of emerald in the middle, and we're going to throw an ender pearl in. So let's go take a look. I have it set up here. Now this, you need a much bigger area for, because obviously it has to use this field for this. So I left this open, but we want it to face this way, and now you can see it's going to show you where it's going to build. Okay? So I did it one up, but here it is one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but you only have to do six. I did it, and then I marked these on the corner. So if you want it to sit fully on the ground, you need six pillars tall to place your things. Now, if you look in your personal device, this is actually a little bit helpful, because if you look at miniature it'll tell you you need to either be 7, 11, or 15 spaces between them. So this one is the largest size, so there's going to be 15 blocks in between all these. So if you count all the way over, there's going to be 15. And I marked the middle there. Okay, so now what we did here, this is a 5x5. Five five. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, but here's what I'm talking about, about placing something in the middle. I just left that there so it'd be lit up. Okay, so we have the middle completely empty. You're going to set up the walls. Okay, the middle's going to be empty. But now it says we need to put an emerald block in the middle. So what you're going to do is you're going to place one block down, and it doesn't have to be emerald, and you're going to place the emerald block right here. This is the one that matters. This block we're going to pick up, so this one doesn't matter at all. And then you're going to come back out, and you're going to put the top on this. So now it's completely sealed, and it's within our field. So now, if we take this ender pearl and throw it in, it's going to start crafting our machine. Isn't this awesome? I love this. I, I love the animation they did for this. I think they did a very good job. And as you can see, the higher they get, it takes a little bit. So you have to give it a minute for it to craft it, but it's completely worth it. And there we go. So now we have this, and we can place it anywhere we want. You know, there's no specific place. Wherever we pop it down, just use our shrinking device. Again, if you click on it, it's not used, but once we use our device, it's now connected to us. And here is where we have our uh, maximum, excuse me, I was tongue-tied for a minute, our maximum, but see there's a dark spot in here, so you're going to want, definitely want to light it up. Now, of course you can't use that because you're not in the exact same world, but these are awesome. You can put machines in here, you can even build a whole base in here, you can do whatever you want. These are totally awesome. So maybe for the future tutorials, we'll start making them uh, into these so that way you guys can see ways to use them. You can even set up your little fields like this in one of those. You can do whatever you want. You can set up your mob farms in there, whatever. But I do suggest uh, lighting them up. So, like, if we go back in this one, we should probably take um, some glowstone and give it a little bit of light. Because I don't know about you, but I definitely do not like going in and having mobs attacking me. There you go. That's all you need. We now have full light. So, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. But these really are simple 
once you get everything set up, they're a little bit confusing because the way JEI and everything shows them, and even on here, it just tells you, you there are tunnels and stuff, but I don't know. I don't see a lot of people using them, so maybe if you do, say something down below. But I've never used the uh, like the redstone tunnels and all that to put stuff in or take stuff out. So that's just not a thing I do. Now you can set up um, a system like this. You could set up an AE system inside one of those. And that way you have multiple systems. You could also do that. But if you have any questions or comments or anything else you'd like to share or something you'd like to see a tutorial on, let me know. But until next time, this is Lava Temptress. Don't get burned.